We now have structured outputs within Olama. I was really excited to see this. I'm going to read through the announcement here. I'll show you some of the examples. Olama now supports structured outputs, making it possible to constrain a model's output to a specific predefined JSON schema. This is available both within the Olama Python as well as the JavaScript libraries. In terms of some of the examples for structured outputs here, parsing data from documents, extracting data from images, structuring all language model responses, more reliability and consistency than JSON mode. To get started, you can download Olama if you haven't already. If this is the first Olama video that you're watching, you can get it completely for free. Just go to olama.com, follow the steps to install it. It is very straightforward. In terms of the dependency and the library itself, you can pip install Olama or you can npm install Olama just like it shows here, depending on how you're going to be using this. Within here, they have a curl example if you just want to go and try this out right away. Now, you do just have to make sure that you do have the latest version of Olama installed. There is a chance that you might just have to restart Olama to make sure that you have the most recent version. Basically, what structured outputs allow you to do is you can specify the format and schema of the object. And what you'll do is you'll map with natural language the different fields that you have. In this case, we're going to have the name, capital, as well as the language. We have two strings for the name and capital. And then for the languages, if it's a country with multiple languages, we're going to have an array in this particular format. So we're going to have an array of items, and each of those items are going to be strings. But you can also specify which of the structured fields are required. So in this example, you can specify that all three are required. So if you ask for, tell me about Canada, it would return with this schema here. So the capital being Ottawa, the languages being English and French, and then the name of the country are all there. If you're leveraging Python, it's leveraging the pedantic library to get the structured outputs. The way that it's set up and recommended from the JavaScript example is it's using Zod as well as Zod to JSON schema for the libraries. And to determine what you want as a structured output, it looks just like this. You have this really nice implementation where you can specify the name is going to be a string, capital string languages is going to be an array of strings, right? And then to call it, you can just invoke it, the OpenAI SDK. Example of what data extraction looks like, say if you have a message, I have two pets, a cat named Luna, and then I also have a two-year-old black cat named Loki. And if you go down here, we go to pets, we have an array of pets, their names, we have the animal type, we have the age, the color, as well as their favorite toy. This could be used to start to collect information, whether it's within a chat-based application, or whether you're actually using this within some pipeline to extract information from websites, documents, or what have you. Now, the other cool thing is Olama also supports vision on some of the models. On Llama 3.2 vision, for instance, say you want a summary of the photo, but in addition to the summary, you also want things like the names of the particular objects in the photo. Within that photo, we had a tree, we had a beach, in this example, it's also self-determining the confidence of that object that they named. Also, some of the attributes of that particular object. And in addition to that, you can really push this pretty far and get a lot of other details. The scene is a beach. The colors are blue, green, and white. The time of day is the afternoon, setting outdoor, so on and so forth. So another great thing with this is it's OpenAI compatible. If you're using the OpenAI SDK, whether it's the TypeScript library or the Python implementation, you should be able to leverage that SDK and just be able to swap out the pieces that you need to point it towards Olama. To do that within the client, you just have to make sure that you point the base URL to where you have Olama hosted. It defaults to this local host 11434 port. And you do have to specify an API key. I don't actually think it needs an API key. It just needs something to fulfill that there is a valid string. And then for the model, of course, you can just swap in the model that you're using for the particular use case. There are a couple tips that they mentioned within here. We use the pedantic or Zod library, like they showed within the examples that I just went through. They also recommend to put within the prompt to return as JSON. So it better understands your request. 
Now, the other thing to consider is to set the temperature to zero. This will give a more deterministic output 